Hello and welcome to Time Tour TV, the show which brings legends back to life. In the studio today we have a performer who is new on the scene and taking Manchester by storm with a brand new single, Say Something. Here's Megan Langfield, everyone. Say something, I'm giving up on you. That was a great performance by Megan Langfield. We'll be hearing another one of her songs later on in the show. But now, today's guest is one of the greatest footballers ever seen, George Best. He's played for one of the biggest football teams in the world, Manchester United, and has recently announced his retirement. Before we welcome him to the Time Tool TV, here's a short documentary to tell us more about his life. George Best, a name sung by thousands and a man adored by the entire footballing world. He scored 179 goals in 470 appearances for Manchester United, while exciting the crowds with his electric runs and clinical finishing. Described by many, including a footballing legend Pele, as the greatest player in the world, George Best is one of the most naturally gifted footballers to ever grace the game. He played among the world-renowned Busby Babes under the incredible management of Sir Matt Busby and was a member of the United Trinity, a trio of players who lit up the English First Division. 
best loved football from the day he was born, with his mother saying, with George, it was always the ball. The skinny youngster from Belfast, who was overlooked by his local team Glentoran, was scouted by Manchester United representative Bob Bishop, who simply sent Sir Matt Busby the message, Boss, I think I've found you a genius. Players are losing this ball in the sun, but it was best who picked up that kid flick. Driven wide. Yes! This saw the start of an incredible career in which George Best helped United to win a whole host of trophies, including the coveted European Cup in 1968. He tore teams apart, showing no mercy. Most notably, it was during a 5-1 victory against Benfica, where Best scored two goals and ran his opponents ragged. We were going into a, into a situation where Benfica hadn't been beaten in Europe on their own ground, ever. And I mean, they've been playing for a long, long time with, with great players, Eusebio, Coluna, um, Torres and really sensational players and going to the match was a little bit of trepidation you know on, on what, we're, what we're going to expect it's a stadium of light in Lisbon that particular match he uh, was the best I ever saw him play after his debut for United on the 14th of September 1963 against West Brom best opponent Graham Williams a hard man from the West Brom defense famously said stand still son so I can have a look at your face I've been looking at your backside all day disappearing up the touchline. This highlights George Best's incredible talent. Many wonder if we will ever see a player as gifted as him again. But if we don't, at least we had the privilege of watching George Best, the finest player of a generation. This is Best. Wriggling out space. What a fine set! What a fine shot, Georgie Best! Fair and through for Best. Here he goes again. Georgie Best. Best going through the middle. He's on for five. There it is. Best. Nice dummy and shot. Yeah. Comes the Best. And it's there. Beautiful. What a truly inspirational documentary. Welcome to the show, George Best, everyone. Hey. Give a round of applause. Hi. The legend himself. Hi. How are Hi. you? All right, yeah. You yeah. all right? Yeah, not bad. Yeah. So the footballing world <coughs> has been sad to see you retire. Uh, yeah, yeah. have been reminiscing yeah, yeah. over the yeah. Yeah. Uh, thousands of goals that yeah. you scored over the years. Uh, what was your favourite moment at Manchester United? I, probably there was two games that stand out. Um, yeah. Obviously, the European Cup, 68, and two years previous to that, uh, 66, the return of El Beetle, yeah. uh, when I actually uh, scored a hat-trick over at the Stadium of Light in Benfica. We beat them 5-1. Obviously, the, the crowning glory was the uh, European Cup in 1968. Uh, we beat them 4-1, yeah. uh, drawing 1-1 at half-time, very tired, and I came on and we, uh, we, we saw them off. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, you've, you've shown to have one of the best talents in football uh, yeah, ever. Yeah scouted by Bobby Bishop yeah. uh, at an early age. Um, as we saw in the documentary, your mum knew you had a, a special talent. Uh, yeah, um, at 18 months, I, I had a ball, straight away, uh, a ball. Um, and yeah, I was playing football, noon till night, um, straight home from school, straight out on the park, and basically I was just playing all the time. I was told I was too skinny as a boy to actually play the game. I wasn't stocky enough, yeah. I wasn't strong enough, but I felt my speed would take me through that, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, and I felt that uh, 
that, that I could play. I was turned down by several clubs, including one of my local ones, Len Turin, but yeah. Bob Bishop saw something in me that nobody else did. So Perfect. I was happy to, you know, go to Manchester, yeah. big, big club, uh, 1958, the Busby Babes. I was always fascinated with Duncan Edwards and people like him and Liam Billy Whelan and all the greats and when they died, you know, in the, in the air crash, yeah. that saddened everyone, even in Northern Ireland, because United have always been big in, in Ireland as well. Amazing. Well, um, we've got Dennis, the, the subject of Dennis Law yeah, 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 scoring Dennis that Law, final yeah. goal against, yeah. uh, against City after he moved, uh, after the transition. How, how did that make you feel? Um, and at the time, uh, I, was, I was in Spain anyway. Um, I, I'd given up uh, Manchester United um, on New Year's Day. My last game was against QPR. Yeah. Um, Tom, Tommy Doherty was not happy. Uh, oh, just on the VT there, yeah. Uh, back heel, yeah. Um, I wasn't there that day, but... Uh, City at the time weren't a great side either, but they, they, he popped the ball in, into the net there. But it wasn't actually Dennis. People under the impression that Dennis sent Manchester United down that day. It wasn't. It was the fact that Wolves couldn't beat Norwich on the Monday night previously, yeah. which essentially meant that we were more or less down anyway. It was just a formality well, going down. I mean, the viewers kind of kind of think that when you play for a football team, you're, you're assigned to it. You, you put all your into, into that football team. And well, moving to the... Opposite side. At the, t at the it, time, that, um, back thing? in the 1970s, at the time it was. Um, Jenny's had no further part at United. Um, Tommy Doherty, the new manager, had no place for um, Dennis. He, mm. he felt surplus to requirements. So yeah. at the end of the 72 73 season, he decided that he no longer needed him. He wanted to build a brand new side. Yeah. Um, Franco Farrell was the previous manager. We sacked him. And uh, at the time, Bobby Charlton had just retired the previous season. Dennis felt he'd done his time there, yeah. and I felt I'd done my time, and I didn't feel there was a future for all three of us. Right. Mm, uh, we've got a few questions reason. here for yeah, you. Yeah. Um, who's the favourite player that you played alongside with, uh, and why? The viewers want to ask you. Alongside, well, obviously, even though myself and Bobby didn't get on very well, uh, Bobby, probably, Bobby Charlton, really? um, Dennis Law, uh, great players there, um, David Sadler for United, all, all the, the greats. Uh, Probably the best player I've played against is Eusebio, who was oh, a Portuguese. Okay. Portuguese, um, yeah. Portuguese. Uh, Pele never had the privilege of playing with. Right. Uh, with playing for Northern Ireland, I never managed to play in yeah. any World Cup finals. But uh, I'd say that one of the best players against uh, was in the stadium of light and in the final of 68 was Eusebio. I'd say he's probably one of the better players that I've played against. Right, uh, perfect. Uh, one more question for yeah. you. Um, so what's the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome whilst playing uh, at such a big team like Manchester United? Well, really, the only way he's down after playing for Manchester United. Uh, but I just went over to Spain uh, and that's where I've been. Um, I might be coming back to the uh, UK. Uh, Fulham are interested in me. Yeah. Uh, Rodney Marsh, a, a good friend of mine who's also an ex-City player. We right. might be joining up at Fulham some point in the next uh, season. So we'll Perfect. see how it goes. But I definitely needed a rest. Uh, 11 years solid playing the game. I just needed a bit of time out. Uh, I felt the time was right. At 27 years of age, uh, I just wanted a break yeah. after being football, 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 right the way through my... Right. Uh, I'm just going to have to bombs. cut you there, yeah, yeah, yeah. George. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, well, that's it for this part of the show. We'll be back after this short break with more questions for George here.
your friend. No, sorry. Alright guys, if you finish what you're doing, uh, you can pack up and leave. Welcome to Manchester, welcome to the true heart of the North West and Britain's third biggest city. A city full of cultural diversity, astonishing sights and amazing architecture. See all that Manchester has to offer and enjoy your time. Welcome back to Town Tunnel TV. We're here with George Best talking about his career and life upon his announcement that he will be retiring from football. So, George, um, what are you planning to do after you retire? You see, the thing is, my friend, I, I, I've been dead for a while, so yeah. I've already been to Fulham. Yeah. But I, you know, so. Well, so, what did you do after you well, retired? Well, after United, um, obviously, um, I re went in the sun for a bit in Spain, in Spain and then. Yeah. Uh, I went to Fulham for a bit, and after Fulham, I went Stop to Stockport County for yeah. a game up the road from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went to America. Nice. And I played what for was Sound your Sounders. Uh, nothing. Face. Well, I met my wife over there in America in yeah. 1978. Um, Angie Best. She yeah. was a Miss World. Uh, famous story you might have heard of. Um, I was lying on a bed with Miss World, um, covered in money, drinking champagne, <laughs> and the uh, bellboy that came up that day he says, George, he says. Where did it all go wrong? <laughs> I'm lying on the bed there with Miss World. I've got all the money in the world. And I say, uh, I, what do you do with all your money? And I said, um, I uh, spend it on drink, going out. Drugs at all. Ladies, no, no, no ladies. No and the rest are just pissed up the wall. <laughs> so, again, I lived the life. Well, I lived the life. Um, I was billed as the first major football star um, back in the 60s and the 70s. Yeah. And then, of course, football's changed completely since I was playing. Yeah. Um, uh, back in, when I completely retired in 1981, um, I just started going on the uh, circuit, doing after dinner speaking um, and doing all that, so. Nice, um, we've got another question for yeah. you. Um, all the young aspiring football players that are coming up now, yeah. um, what kind of, uh, what, could, what could you tell them to uh, focus on to, it's, it's difficult today because there are so many different things in place. The money that they're on, um, when I was 18, 19, we were on £10, £15 a week, which yeah. is probably equivalent to about £300 a week now. Some of these footballers today are probably earning more in a week than I earned in my entire career. Yeah. Um, generally what we have to do is buy a pub or something when we finish. These guys don't have to. Yeah. Uh, they've got all the nutrition right, the drink. Mm. what to avoid nightclubs totally the opposite to the things i was doing <laughs> uh, you know meeting girls getting drunk all yeah. the time that, that 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 was the downfall if you want to make it in in this sport now you've got to be completely focused yeah a hundred percent you can't have any distractions you can't have any you know nightclubs and everything if you live the way i live you wouldn't be a professional footballer you, yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't do it not in this day and age so we've got um, a final question here yeah. um what would, what would you say the if you were going to score one last goal that you scored in your career, which one would it be? Um, apart from United, I'd like to have taken Northern Ireland to the World Cup finals and okay. maybe played in the World Cup final. Yeah. And scored the winning goal. 
against England, something like that. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd have loved that uh, to have. Uh, be, being for Northern Ireland, there wasn't many sort of great, great players that could drag that team through to any finals. Um, yeah. But to a major championship, something I never ever did. Um, that's my only one regret. Um, I think I'm happy with what I did at United. I honestly don't think I could have got any more out. I won league championships. I won European Cup. Um, did everything. Uh, the only thing is, it's internationally, I didn't really go to the heights that I should have gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I did with my club career. Yeah. Amazing, uh, amazing insight into your life, George. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there, yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to say a massive thank you to George here for joining us on today uh, on Time Film TV. Uh, he will be a massive loss to football. I've no doubt his legacy will live on forever. Um, now let's hear what's been happening around the world on Time Film News. Welcome to Time Funnel TV News Report. I'm Beth Collinson and here are your main stories for today. It's a sad day for football and Manchester United Football Club as star striker George Best has today announced his retirement from football. He's billed as one of the greatest footballers ever to grace the pitch and leaves United after making 470 appearances, scoring 179 goals for the club. It's the nicest thing in football to see the ball go into the back of the net. Yes. What do you feel when you score? Uh, well, you can't describe it. It's just uh, its one of those things you, you train for it all week and yes. if, then if you go out on the Saturday and do it, it's, it's fabulous. In politics, Margaret Thatcher has election triumph after being re-elected by the British public. Speaking after her victory, Thatcher has told Time Tunnel TV that her first priority is to reshuffle her cabinet, saying that it will continue to reflect a range of political views. Here we see some pictures as she made her return to number 10 Downing Street before leaving for the traditional return to Conservative headquarters. Why do you have to remake your cabinet? I mean, you're presumably quite satisfied with it. Uh, one could carry on just exactly as is now. But I think somehow, when you come up to an election, I think it's the time to have a new look. And I think people rather expect a new look. And the combination of those two things uh, is important and in any event I feel it's time to um, have a new look. In world news, South Korean Boeing 747 jetliner has apparently strayed into Soviet airspace and is shot down by a Soviet Su-15 fighter jet after it trapped the airliner for two hours. All 269 aboard have been killed. And now in sport. Manchester United have just beaten Brighton and Hove Albion 4-0 in the FA Cup final replay after the first match was drawn 2-2. Brian Robson scores two of the goals, with the other two coming from Arnold and 18-year-old Norman Whiteside. Manager Ron Atkinson is delighted after the win, which finishes a disappointing season for the Reds, who finished just fourth in the English First Division. Davis who got a good position. Robson! That's the goal! that Manchester United wanted from their captain. Turned it in for Whiteside. <laughs> 2 0 to Manchester United. Grealish through the middle. Casey's shot has been deflected by Moran. Brilliant save by Bailey. Muran takes the kick. And the header by Robson finds Stapleton. McQueen made a touch and it's been fired in. gets his second and Manchester United's third oh and he's got behind was he held the linesman flag penalty penalty Stevens on Robson but he scores with his left foot and makes it 4-0 after 63 minutes and Manchester United have won the FA Cup with the biggest winning margin for 80 years. And finally, the weather with Michael Fish. Tomorrow we're going to have a fine day, plenty of sunshine, especially in the southeast. But in these northern areas, you'll see more of the sun than you saw today. So everywhere temperatures just a bit higher than they have been today. In the far northwest, those fronts are close enough to keep some rain going from time to time. And in Northern Ireland, although it'll start off with some sunshine in the morning, we'll find some cloud coming along in the afternoon. 
Now, l later on in the day, uh, probably late afternoon and evening time, you'll find some uh, cloud coming along, some thunderstorms in the Channel Islands and southwest England. That's all. Good evening. So that was, the, that was the news. That's it for today's show. Thanks again for George Beth for being our star guest. And thank you for joining us here on Time Talk TV. To finish off, here's another performance from Megan Langfield with a single Budapest. Have a great evening and see you next time on Time Talk TV, guys. My house in Budapest, my, my hidden treasure chest, golden grand piano, my beautiful Achieved. It may be hard for you to stop and believe, but for you, who you, who I lose it all. Give me one good reason why I should never make a change. Baby, if you want me, then I'll. If you just say the words, I'll, I'll up and run all to you. Who, you, who, I lose it all. Give me one good reason why I should never make a change. Baby, if you want me, then all this will go away. Give me one good reason why I should never make a change. Friends and family, they don't understand. They fear I'll lose so much if you take my hand. But for you, who, you, who, I lose it all.